Thank you very much. Uh, as we get organized here, uh, we just had a great meeting with the president, the vice president, uh, talking about the American Jobs Plan uh, and talking about the importance of of what that plan is going to do for the American people and for our economy and for everybody. Um, my main focus in the Jobs Plan was talking about the advocacy that, that I have had with mayors from across America, uh, some businesses, members of the Senate, members of the Congress. Uh, as well as um, other advocate groups, including labor unions. Uh, quite honestly, when you think about the jobs plan, uh, when it comes to the Department of Labor, uh, one of the things that's most important in that plan is workforce development money and training workers for the future, uh, and also apprenticeship programs and all of that. So uh, the meeting today at the President was very, very good. Uh, he stressed again the importance of this plan uh, as an infrastructure plan, a people infrastructure plan, not just about roads and bridges, uh, a people infrastructure plan, and about our economy moving forward. So uh, it was a very productive, great meeting. It ran over, uh, but uh, it was uh, productive. I'm going to turn the microphone over now. You'll hear from all the, all the different cabinet secretaries. We'll take questions at the end. I'm going to turn it over to Secretary Mondo, Secretary of Commerce. Thank you. As Marty said, it was a terrific meeting with the President. Uh, we discussed the jobs package and the family package. I was able to update the President on all the work that I've been doing, reaching out to members of Congress, to the business community, big business and small business. Particular focus areas are around broadband. Uh, I have heard over and over again from Every governor I've spoken with, Democrat and Republican alike, how important the importance of having broadband in every community, and I believe there's bipartisan support in the House and the Senate for that. And then also we had a discussion about the CHIPS Act and how vitally important it is that we revitalize the semiconductor manufacturing industry in America. We'll put millions of people to work, and right now we're living through a semiconductor shortage, which is landing a lot of people out of work. And so the president, again, just underscored how important that component of the jobs package is. It's also an area of great bipartisan support, and we are hopeful at this point that the CHIPS Act will be funded as called for in the president's jobs package. So uh, obviously from a transportation perspective, it's a good opportunity to update the president on some of what we've been hearing and, and seeing from around the country, both in travels and in conversations. There is clearly bipartisan interest and enthusiasm to do big things in infrastructure and in transportation. And uh, the president challenged us to continue focusing on the jobs implications of all of this. Uh, he's often said that uh, uh, this is about the competitiveness of this country as we see allies and strategic competitors like China making major investments in their transportation infrastructure. We've got to make sure America doesn't fall behind, and the president's passion for that, uh, for America leading the way, was uh, an evidence throughout the great conversation that we just had. Maybe we should take some questions. We agree with everything they said. <laughs> is there a sense of alarm today based on the jobs numbers, Mr. Secretary? And is there a sense that perhaps the administration hasn't calibrated where the country really was in this reemergence to back to work? No, I, I wouldn't say necessarily there's a sense of alarm. I, I think that, you know, we're definitely on, on the recovery. Uh, but we have, a, we have a steep hill to climb, as I said earlier today, in many different channels. I mean, when you look at different areas, we're excited and uh, pleased with the tourism and hospitality industry. Big, strong numbers this month, where it's been pretty flat from a year and a half, almost a year and a half ago now. Uh, we saw more people looking for employment in the month of April than in the previous months, which is great. And, and when we look at this, you can't look at it month by month. You look at it over a period of time. Over the last three months, we've added, added about a million and a half jobs to, to the economy, which has been great, as compared to the previous three months where we added about 180,000 jobs. So, uh, I, I mean, I think things are looking good. Certainly, there's still more work to be done, and there's no question about it. Uh, the, the American Jobs Plan really isn't about the current status, what we're doing, the American Rescue Plan was, and, and clearly we, we all have work to do moving forward. Uh, this is for any of you. You've been talking about the American Jobs Plan, and we haven't seen any Republicans come out of support. In fact, Mitch McConnell recently said that his job is 100 percent to oppose the Biden administration. Um, while polls show that the American people seem to support the agenda, you haven't been able to win Republican support on Capitol Hill. So what will you all be doing to try to move things along on Capitol Hill? To say, I um, that com there are components, the huge amount of components of this plan that individually, uh, the many in the Republican Senate will say that they support. 
people who have voted in the past, for example, to um, make sure that we have the ability to have carbon capture and sequestration, those are in my areas, the things that um, coal communities, communities that have been left behind, see as important for their jobs. You see people who have, Republicans in the Senate and Democrats in the Senate who have voted in the past for some of these energy measures in 2020, vast bipartisan support. So there are, uh, I think there is optimism that there will be agreement in large chunks of these. I mean, roads and bridges, obviously. Semiconductors uh, is one that you see bipartisan support in. A lot of people are talking about critical minerals for the batteries, for the electric vehicles. There are the threads of some real bipartisanship, and I think that the White House is looking forward next week to meeting with uh, Shelley Moore Capito, who has put forward the compromise uh, on the Republican side, and um, hopefully we will see an American plan with two parties coming together and going big, because that's Can what we the need. Split up the package so that he can pass some of those things? I think they want to see one package. They'd like to see it big, but obviously this is all subject to negotiation. President Trump's line yesterday on the corporate tax of 25 to 28 percent. Is that where he is now? What does that mean? Are there any other the president's been clear from the beginning that he's open to compromise and wants bipartisan support, and so we will continue to have those discussions with members of Congress. What I can tell you as the Commerce Secretary is that I have had dozens and dozens and dozens of conversations with companies, big and small, and many of them have come out in support of the jobs package at the 28%. So the president's been clear. He doesn't want to do deficit spending. This has to be paid for. And we are optimistic we'll find some bipartisan support around the plan, including a corporate tax increase. Capito, One more guy. Give on the six hundred, the number of around six hundred million. Capito and her and her matrix. Are they signaling any it, we're negotiating. You know, it's a negotiation. We're in process. This is democracy. This is the way government's supposed to work. The chip shortage has posed a problem for you. We are working on it, but there's no quick fix. I mean, because of the lack of investment in semiconductor manufacturing, America is behind, which is why there's an urgency around passing the president's plan for $50 billion investment in semiconductors. So we're doing, yes, we're in constant contact with the auto companies and semiconductor companies. We're going to try to do what we can to ease the shortage short term. But in the long run, the solution is to be, you know, less reliant on China and Taiwan and make more chips in America. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks. How long was your meeting? Happy Mother's Day. How long did the meeting uh, A little over an hour.